when a city invites you to do something with one of its famous monuments, it's quite an act of confidence on their part. First, I was slightly nervous about it because it's, it's quite a difficult task to illuminate a structure that is so complex. But I was also, I have to say, very honored that, that I was invited to do it. I took the job about a year ago and started thinking about it and started making some demos in my studio. Had a little model and tried making um, a home, home scale version of it. And I discovered that what seemed to work best was to not only ignore the structure but to even try to fight it so that I wasn't really following the arches but mostly I wanted to make something that was quite chaotic and very detailed. I found that the more detail there was, the better it seemed to work. And I didn't have very many of those. I realized that I needed a lot of new images. So in fact, I would say about probably 40% of the images that we used were made here specifically for this. I arrived here with three different musical ideas. I didn't know what the situation was going to be like, so I didn't want to put all my hopes in one piece. And the first thing I noticed, of course, is that it's extremely noisy. It's, it's a very noisy place with traffic on three sides and traffic that makes quite a lot of noise as well. So I thought, okay, I've got to make a piece of music that invites all of these things into itself so that you can't tell the difference between the music and the ambient sound of the traffic. Luckily I had with me my new app which is called Scape which is basically a music generating device so I was able to play that live actually I, so I played live every evening. I had a basic sort of fundamental piece that was pre-recorded that ran through most of the show but then everything else I added live. I was able to make some sounds that sounded like police sirens or cars but a little bit more musical so it, it made the buses and the planes sound like they belonged in the music. That was my idea to try to make the whole place sound like it was music. The visuals were a generative system which I've been using for the last 20 years or so, where what's happening is that there are lots and lots of images that I've prepared in advance, and they sit in a number of banks of images, and the computer is selecting randomly so that it's constantly creating new combinations. It's very unlikely that one combination of images would repeat. So you'll sometimes see the same image again, but there'll be another overlay on top of it. So, so you very, it's very unlikely that you'd see exactly the same combination. So if I call these things paintings, I'm deliberately saying, I want this to be seen in terms of the history of painting, not really in the history of light shows, for example. <laughs> Calling it 77 million paintings is saying, this is an impossibly large number. It kind of tips you off that something is happening because nobody could actually produce 77 million paintings by any old technique in their whole life, you know. Similarly, if I call something music, I'm saying I want this to be seen in terms of a tradition of listening, really. In music, of course, every new form of music is really a new form of listening. It's not just the notes that are changing, they're sounds, it's 
what you do as a listener. I see a different kind of artist emerging, not just now, but for the last 50 years or so. Um, somebody who doesn't make finished objects, symphonic pieces if you like, but who makes systems that produce work and that keep producing work. I think there's a tradition of this in music. Terry Riley is an example, Steve Reich, lots of other people. And I, I feel I belong to that tradition. What I think this new art is doing is the artist presenting the start of something. Here's the system, here's the process, now let's see what it makes this time. I don't know, and you don't know. We're, we're going to watch what it does. So I was, I was an audience as well, so I was sitting there going, ooh, that's good. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> ooh, this bit's a bit dreary. <laughs> One of the words that I've heard here a lot and which I like very much is inclusion. This is, for me, a socially powerful idea and Brazil is one of the places where it's being worked out. How do we do that? How do we make things that include more people? And as a social ethic, it's, it's a fantastic thought. So I see this as being part of that ethic of saying, we're going to make things that are for everybody and they're invited to come and I thought people were very respectful and very interested and I was, I was impressed with the audience and the way they behaved. Especially during the fantastic rainstorm last night <laughs> where they just stayed <laughs> getting thousands of gallons of water thrown over them and they stayed watching as the picture became steadily more indistinct. As for the future, I really don't know. I, I think, interestingly enough, I think that the apps might be more memorable than anything else because I think, in a sense, they are the beginning of a new art form. It would probably take a few years to realise that there is a new art form. Oh, and that's where it started, with these things, you know, these funny little things on a funny little tablet. It'll look very primitive in 15 years' time, but I think it is the beginning of something.